Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. I'm Paul Allen. And the topic of this newsletter is why you need statistics. I'm guessing that if you're a business owner or you're a managing director, a production director, I'm guessing you don't drive to work in the morning thinking what my business needs is more statistics. I know that you already wallpaper the walls with lots of graphs and performance charts and you think you do statistics to death. But to be honest, statistics that way, which is just looking at yesterday, is the least you can do with all the numbers you collect. You collect massive amounts of numbers these days in modern business. And what I just want to talk about is actually why you need more statistics, why you need better statistics. So I'm going to just use a simple example that we understand something that generates data for us, uh, and we're going to use a dice. Uh, it's something that I like to use in my workshops a lot, uh, but uh, it's a very simple process. It's a nice random number generator, which is just like your processes in your business, uh, random number generator, and of course we can understand it. And of course if I roll that dice uh, a thousand times, let's say, of course I get a nice, I get a nice pattern from that dice, usually equal quantities, of ones, twos, threes, etc. And I'll get this kind of uniform distribution. Not perfectly flat, but uh, an equal chance of getting all the numbers. Now, if I get a customer come to me and says, Ah, Paul, those fantastic numbers that you generate, I'd like to buy some of those numbers, but I don't want ones. Ones are rejects to me, don't send them to me. So these things over here, are going to be defects. Now, before I switch my machine on this morning, so let's make a prediction here. Before I switch my machine on, what is my guaranteed locked in defect rate for this process? Well, it's going to be one in six. We'll just stick it in a percentage. It's going to be 16%. Now, when I roll the dice, when I run the process, Am I going to get exactly 16%? Not necessarily, but it's going to be close. It's going to be 15 point something or 16 point something. It's going to be really close. Um, and that's the power of statistics because it doesn't matter whether I roll this dice 1,000 times, 10,000 times, 100,000 times, or a million times, the defect rate is going to be predicted for the next five days five months, five years, if it keeps running in that way. That's the power of statistics. The power of statistics is the ability to predict tomorrow, not the ability to look at yesterday. And if you can predict tomorrow, you can turn that to your advantage, and you'll know what to do about this. You'll know what to do next, whether a defect rate is acceptable to you. It won't be a surprise. Defect rates, should not be a surprise. So I have another dice here, so I'll pick this one. This is 10 sided. Obviously if I drew the same diagram, I'm gonna get 10 of these things across here. If I then say ones that are defect, what's my defect rate gonna be for that thing? And I haven't even run the thing yet. I haven't even switched the machine on and I already know my prediction. Here it is. My defect rate is gonna be 10%. The power of prediction. That is what statistics are for. And I'll give you one last, I'll give you one last silly example, uh, just to show you the power of statistics, and you can take it away and maybe use this at Christmas. Uh, and it's playing Monopoly. Um, Monopoly is a nice random game, isn't it? There can't be any skill to it, you just roll the dice and you just land on certain squares and stuff happens to you, and it's completely random. Is it completely random? What's everybody trying to do in a game of Monopoly? Well, they're usually all trying to buy Mayfair and Park Lane, aren't they? Why do you do that? Because you think you're going to get the most money back from those two. Hmm. Why don't we use some statistics? Where's the most money on a Monopoly board? Well, let's work it out. Where's the square most people go to more often than any other square in the game of Monopoly? Well, They go to jail. It's the most popular square on the board. 
Now, unfortunately, I can't make any money at the jail, so that's no good to me at this point. But there's another statistic I need. What's the most popular number on two dice? Well, it's seven. So if you're here a lot, and you roll seven a lot, where do you end up? You end up in the orange properties. Marlborough, Vine Street, and Bow Street. They are the properties more people go to than any other set on a Monopoly board. If you play Monopoly, get into a fist fight for these properties. That is where the most money is. Now, does it mean you're gonna win? Not necessarily. Does it tip the odds in your favor? You bet. And I'm making a prediction using statistics, even though I'm about to play a completely random game. By the way, you can tell when my kids play Monopoly with me at Christmas, I'm a little bit of a nightmare. But anyway, Statistics, what are they for? That's to make a prediction, not to look at yesterday. Subscribe or drop me an email and I hope to hear from you soon.